Okay, so uh, I work at Brown University in the School of Engineering, and for five years I ran the Humanity Centered Robotics Initiative as Associate Director. Um, and we've looked at many issues related to the societal impacts of robotics. Um, but one of the biggest issues that we've looked at uh, that people cared about was jobs. Um, so the concept that robots are going to take your job has entered into the public zeitgeist. You see it everywhere. Uh, you see it in Super Bowl commercials. You see it in uh, advertisements like this uh, billboard from Prudential that says robots can't take your job if you're already retired. Great marketing, by the way, for boomers, not so great for Gen Z. Um, so uh, Ty Brady from Amazon Robotics uh, was quoted as saying, it's a myth that robotics and automation kills jobs. It's just a myth. Um, and you know, if you look at Amazon's experience uh, for Ty, it is a myth because Amazon is growing on like just about any company in history. Um, so they're adding a lot of robots, but they're adding a lot of people too. But let's take a look at what robots do in a more established industry. Um, so this is uh, US manufacturing uh, output versus jobs, uh, looking 1972, 2010. I really wanna focus on this period from 2000 to 2010. Am I and allowed what... to interrupt you, Dr. Peter, because we're not able to see your screen. Oh, you're not able to see my slides. Well, that's Let me confirm that while I'm on unmute. We're about to see them. Can you see them now? Yes, we are on the map. Please. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, so Going back uh, to what I was saying, uh, this period between 2000 and 2010 uh, is probably the most dramatic period of job loss uh, in recent history for US manufacturing. And this is the period when we put in the most robots uh, in US manufacturing. And we lost about 5.8 million jobs, about a third of the US manufacturing workforce. Uh, and we produced just about the same amount of stuff despite this precipitous decline in uh, uh, jobs. So, I mean, this is just an example of what happens when robots enter an established industry, but this is in controlled environments like factories. What is gonna happen when you start to release robots into uncontrolled environments, uh, like this auto truck that uh, does deliveries of all sorts of goods uh, across the US? Well, it doesn't bode well for truck drivers and truck driving being one of the top uh, occupations by state uh, in the US. Um, and the technology that enables self-driving trucks, the computer vision, the LIDAR, um, that's the decision-making. That's also enabling uh, things like Flippy, the burger flipping robot. Uh, and Flippy is going into 100 fast food restaurants in the next six months uh, in the US as a trial. Um, major chain, uh, gonna leave the chain name out of this, but um, they're, they're starting to replace their workers at same, the same time as workers are surprisingly, or not surprisingly, uh, striking for higher pay uh, for $15 an hour. So uh, while all this is happening, you may say, well, there are other jobs that people can retrain to. And it's, it's not just blue collar jobs that are in trouble here. Uh, white collar jobs like radiology, AI is coming for radiology. Computer vision, AI is going to have a big impact on radiology jobs. Um, so McKinsey estimates that this is gonna be 400 million jobs lost globally by 2030. Not sure about that number, but um, it's going to be a big deal. Now, there are people who don't think this is gonna happen. Rodney Brooks, co-founder of iRobot and uh, Rethink Robotics uh, and a few other robotics companies um, has famously said Moore's Law and exponential laws like Moore's Law can fail. Um, so uh, the instead of having an exponential curve where things keep on going up, you can level off in your improvements. And if you look at the state of the art 
uh, like this Atlas robot from uh, Boston Dynamics trying to stack a box, you can see where Rodney's coming from. Uh, Atlas is having a hard time stacking this box and ends up failing. And it fails because it has no idea what anything around it is other than a point cloud and the fiducial markers marking off that special box. Um, but let's look at another robot. And this is a PR1 research robot from almost or from over a decade ago. Um, and it's doing a really admirable job cleaning up this room. And how is it able to do this? It's able to do this because it's doing this in partnership with a human. There's a human puppeteering this robot into cleaning up the room. And they're able to do this with a mechanical gantry system. Now that's very expensive and it's a hard interface. But what we found at Brown about five years ago is that you can replicate a mechanical gantry system in VR. Now, what this means is that we are getting close to having VR call centers where people can control robots from anywhere in the world to do a physical task anywhere else in the world. So that is going to open up labor markets so that people like this laborer in Guatemala uh, who makes about uh, six to seven dollars a day can compete on labor markets with somebody making 15 to 20 dollars a day in the U.S. Now, this is going to have a big impact on jobs. Uh, and what is the solution? Well, some people say the solution is basic income. Uh, that we're going to need to have some sort of universal support system. I say the solution is diving deeper into the hard problems. Um, I, I think there's a lot of new technologies out there, but we are facing challenges such as climate adaptation uh, or uh, expansion to other planets eventually, uh, interplanetary travel, hopefully, um, that are going to be serious challenges that are going to require a lot of uh, human effort to solve. So there's going to be a lot of retraining, but I think we're going to come out on the positive end of this. Uh, and we're going to work in partnership with the robots where the robots are working with us to help us achieve great goals. Because as Ban Ki-moon said, saving our planet, lifting people out of poverty, advancing economic growth, these are one in the same fight. And robotics is just going to be a tool to help us engage in that fight for a better future. Thank you.